Dr. Rings, I really need to talk to you. Emily. Yeah. I just got your message. I'm with my wife. I went to your office, but you weren't there. So I came here and, um, could we just go talk? If it's an emergency, I can admit you. No. I just, um, I was getting on the subway and, and it was like when I was in the car. I have to go to work, I just need five minutes. You're gonna get to work after. Okay, five minutes. Okay. I'm sorry. Call me after the interview. Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Travers, and this is Popcorn, where we tell you what is happening at the movies. And I'm telling you there's a great happening out there right now called Side Effects, directed by Steven Soderbergh and starring these two people who are in front of me right now as Patient, Rooney Mara, and Shrink, Jude Law. All right, well, I think the best way to start then, and because I think we need to tread carefully here because this is a movie where if your friends are out there seeing it, tell them to shut up. You know? <laughs> just tell them whether you liked it or not. Steven and mentioned go yesterday, on. actually, and uh, he said he'd, he'd, he just went back and saw this film totally by chance, but he talked about the, you know, the, the, the films, films of the past, like Double Indemnity and um, a more recently Jagged Edge, Fatal Attraction, mm -hmm. but that they used to be more um, common. And this relationship that the audience would have with a film where it was like, don't tell your friends, you know, there's a twist, but was, was more um, familiar. And this, this film certainly fits into that. And it's, well, it's now, a thrill, it's a thrill when it, when it arrives. Well, it is, but we now live in the internet age where nobody seems to want Nothing's to keep a, a secret. Nothing's a secret anymore. It isn't. Oh, yeah. But anyway, let's start with you, patient. Who is this Emily that you're playing? How far can you go in telling us who she, she is? You were the hardest job. Yeah, I can't really talk about Oh, you can. You could at least say that she's got a husband getting out of... Yes, uh, yeah, she, yeah. It, she is very patient. She's waited four years for her husband to get mm -hmm. out of prison. And um, it kind of turns out that him coming back is almost harder than him going away. And they have to sort of re-get to know each other. And that... Um, that big life change of him coming back sort of um, sets her off on this depression. Because he's in for insider trade. Yes. Four years. Four and years. your life is different now, too. Yeah. You're just not living as well as you did when you first married him. Yeah. And then comes Dr. Jonathan Banks. To the rescue. Yeah, I play uh, a very, what I would call in England, upwardly mobile um, psychiatrist. He's, an, he's a Brit working in New York um, and he, he works both at the public hospital and he also has his own practice. Um, so like that's where the Brit accent's coming from. <laughs> yeah. You were told to play it and keep and you still 40 keep years it. I've been in character. <laughs> <laughs> Try honing this, well done. this character. Did you <laughs> yes, believe it? <laughs> I, I am, yes. But he's a guy, I, I would say the, the doctor in this is a guy who um, prides himself on his abilities. I think, he, he, I think he's empathetic towards his patients, but he certainly sees them very much uh, as a kind of equation. He, you know, he, he, I think, prides himself that he can read people pretty quickly and believes and relies very heavily on medication and sees medication as a sort of mathematical um, sum, if you like, that just needs figuring out and mm -hmm. applying. Mm -hmm. But with this instance, with this case, he can't quite figure it out. Mm. Steven Soderbergh has decided that this will be the last film he will make, perhaps forever. I'm hoping that's a major lie. And <laughs> what did you do to him? He decided that before. Really? Yeah. We was started it before yeah, or yeah. was it just the experience of uh, I think he decided it a few he made years it so ago. Hard. No, who knows? I mean, he's not a guy who would say something for effect. He doesn't strike me as someone yeah. who's saying something just to be like, I want everyone to stop me. I think he's really he's gotten to a point where he, and I'm sort of quoting him, not me, but where I think mm -hmm. he feels like he doesn't s see himself in an industry that's necessarily moving in the direction of where he wants evolve, to evolution. I think he doesn't see it going where he believes it could go. And I think also he has loads of other interests. Yeah, right? he's going to keep, you know, 
creating things. He's still yeah. gonna painting, do all sorts of things. Painting, photography, theater. Theater. I think television. He still wants to be a part of. Um, yeah, his photography. Well, everything. he has the the Liberace movie. Doesn't yes. need to go there. But you two working with him now, knowing that he had said this, didn't try to stop him. Didn't you? Come on, Rooney. Didn't go up to him and say, Steve. No, I asked him about really? it, but um, again, he's not a guy who says something that he doesn't mean. Mm. So yeah. he'd obviously been very thoughtful in his decision, and um, I think it's a shame, but I think he's probably making the right decision for him, and maybe, you know, 10 years from now he'll come back. But I think he'd come back even better, if that's even possible, because I think he put a lot of thought into his decision. What happens? We hear... Those of us who are outside of all of this, that takes you inside to the business of crafting a, a film. Mm. We always hear about chemistry reads and getting to know you before you're cast, that two actors have to do. What did you have to do with Jude? Nothing. Nothing. It was just I was cast. personally really keen on this particular job, because I know what you mean. I mean, the woman who plays my wife, Vanessa, mm -hmm. I realized suddenly one of the first days of filming, we had to go in and do a really domestic scene. So I got them to give me her number and we went out for dinner and we planned out like how we had met and we put a background and had a couple of glasses of wine and we were like, okay, at least now we feel like we can turn up tomorrow and be like, hey, hi, hi. Mm -hmm. But I was quite keen with you to try yeah. actually and keep a sort of distance so that, so that the first few times we met, there really was this sense of introduction yeah. and uh, separation in a way because it was it was uh, important to the to the roles I think yeah and same thing with Channing because he is sort of just coming back into my life it, I, we've kind of wanted it to have sort of a awkward re-getting to know you kind of thing I'm just thinking now that you probably don't know each other. It's still, it's finished. <laughs> you never really shared stories of growing up. Nothing, nothing like that happened. Just to keep the mystery going. <laughs> well, you do, you, you swap a little, but also yeah. at the same time, at the end of the day, it's, it's a job and you work that, you know, you have to work that into your own life, which continues alongside and... Uh, Real life? You let that intrude? Sadly. <laughs> It, it intrudes. It intrudes. It just comes violently. in even when you don't really want it to. But you know, I think also there is a certain intensity and a certain level of uh, trust mm -hmm. that you that you exchange that bonds you in some way. You know, yeah. and you meet again, and there's. It's not like you, you start again. It's like you, you swap. It's an intense relationship for say ten weeks, two months, whatever it may be. What's the refrain we can do? We can do love. La 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 la. <laughs> There's no way we're gonna get Rooney, you. This will get you on anything. stage. 